I, I, I just want to get right after. I mean, obviously, it's it's an awesome opportunity for you to to be able to fight in the playoffs after originally you, you fell just short after that split decision victory. I mean, how exciting is this for you? What is this, what has this experience been like for you? It's um it's been a roller coaster. That's the best probably way to describe it. After I got knee in the nuts and obviously the second round started, I knew I weren't coming into the obviously the playoffs. So in my mind it was just win the fight now. You know, I've got to win the trilogy. But after the fight, it was just a, a weird one, like to me, I think you're gonna be in the in the semi finals, just a lot of feeling. Because all the heavyweights have just been falling off. You got to think we started back in April, and I think seven heavyweights ended up pulling out. So it was sort of one of those, you know, stay ready and um, the call will come. So I took four days off, went back training, and I got the call within the week. It was crazy, man. I was grinning hard. <laughs> Even like I'm doing now, I just smile and I was like, hey, thank you. I was like, thank you. Yeah, and the thing that's really unique about this format, too, is is obviously you have the quick turnarounds in between fights, right? And obviously, in this situation yes, that you're in, you know, this is like the yeah. quickest of turnarounds. So what has that been yes. like for you in terms of just adapting to the format and adapting to the quick turnarounds? What has that been like? So, so to be honest, um, I like being active. I'm always training. That's, that's what I do, you know. Uh, when I'm not fighting, I'm still in there helping my friends and just getting better myself. And it's my it's a routine I have every day. So I already had a, a teammate to get ready and help him get ready, um, Mohamed Usman. He fights this weekend. So I took four days off, went back to help him regardless. So it was normal. You know, I, I'd rather active and just waiting around and you know stop training then you start don't know when you're fighting don't get me wrong it is tiring it is taxing but this is what i do every day anyway so why not do what i do but this time actually have something to be ready for at the end of the six weeks so it is it's perfect and in terms of the fights themselves obviously something that's unique is the point system right in terms of you know, you can be in a situation that you were in where in your last fight where you won, but you still yes. don't you don't make the postseason. So do you feel like that's that's been kind of an adjustment for you in terms of like adopting and adapting your style, you know, to push for the finish and to, to move up the rankings? Um, so I didn't really hear what you said, so you did you did cut out. So I don't wanna start talking and then the wrong what did you say? Oh, you're good. I was just asking, um, do you feel like you've had to um, adapt your style to the season format a little bit in terms of, you know, not just even just looking to win, but also looking for yeah. finishes too? Yeah, so going into the first fight, I started too hard and it, it backfired. And then this, um, the second fight, I think I started a little bit too slow. But also, I know Modos had a game plan, you know, um, keep away from me, but attack, attack for the takedowns, you know, so it wasn't striking much. Um, so it is a tough one. You either go guns blazing to get maximum points, but then it could fail, or you take your time and the finish will come, um, or, you do, or you get minimum point. So it, it, it is a tough one. You have to sort of, go in the middle, you know what I mean, start hard and sort of coast. So now we don't have that no more, so I'm not so worried. There's no points anymore, so just go in there and, and win the fight, obviously, minimum damage yourself, take your minimum damage. So it is a tough one, um, and obviously, again, it's definitely something I'll have to be for, for next time. And then with Oleg Popov, let's look forward. Obviously, it's a big fight. Um, in terms of the stylistic matchup, I mean, what do you know about him? What have you seen about him uh, in terms of his style, his strengths, his weaknesses? And how do you feel like that benefits you? Um, so he's um, a very heavy grappler. He likes to grapple a lot. Strikes, yes, but it's mainly grappling. Take you down, hold you against the cage, and you know, try and get the ground and pound. Or he'll win by, by points. And 
He hasn't fought a grappler like me. When I've watched his fights, he hasn't really fought a, a high, high level grappler. You know, he, well, he did fight Steve. Again, he's a high level. And he was able to take his back and you know, control him in the first round. So I know that that's there. And I know I've trained super hard for the fitness, trained super hard for the grappling and my striking and my conditioning. So I know I'll get those positions. And the difference with me, I'm a high finisher. I've got a very high percentage for finish um, ratio. And I just don't think it's for anyone like me, man. So when it does come to that, he's fought a lot of grapplers or a lot of opponents. Once he takes you down, that's pretty much how it is. He's on top. They may get up, but there's no reversals. And we all know I love to reverse. I love to get on top, stay heavy. And I think it showed in the last Modosky fight. He actually got to the point where he was gasping. And I know they're training together. So, you know, I think Modosky's probably said to him, hey, <laughs> you got to be super ready for this guy. And in terms of you specifically, something that's that's really unique is obviously, you know, all these years later, you know, you're still fighting in, at the top. You're yeah. fighting some of the top guys. So i got to ask you, like, what do you feel like in terms of reflecting on your career, what has been the biggest key to your longevity in the sport and staying at that top level? Recovery is key. I get my massage. I go in the cold plunge. I go in the um, hyperbaric chamber, I go in the cryotherapy, um, cryo tank. I do it all. Um, red light. I think this is so important. I think a lot of fighters and um, a lot of people don't use the recovery like it should be. I do it daily. It does take a lot of time. But I think once you've trained, your body needs to recover and plenty of sleep as well. And, and obviously, with, with all the different advancements in, in medicine, and obviously cryotherapy yeah. and the cold plunge and all that, like, yes. do you feel like that's kind of allowed for, you know, fighters your age to still compete at that high level into their 40s, you know, like a Glover Teixeira was yeah. and, and all that? Yes, I really do. I'm 41, and I'm still beating these guys in their 30s. So I, I think the proof is in the pudding. And... I think when I was younger, I just sort of train hard every single day, sometimes three times a day. Now it's, I'll train twice, sometimes even one. If it's a hard one, hey, I'm going to rest the evening, get my recovery in, make it the next day hard. You know, and, and, and I think if you listen to your body, again, not saying don't push it, but if you listen to your body and don't have these injuries, I think that's where we get injured is where we push it a little bit too much. You're allowed to be like, not today, or you know what, I'm going to take it a little bit. You're allowed those days, and I think I'm living proof of that. You, uh, one last question for me, and, and once again, I really do appreciate the time. It's great to meet yeah. you, great to chat with you. Um, yeah, no, on your no. social media pages, you've t you've talked a lot about, you know, kind of the growth in your mindset during your career and, and talked a lot about yeah. discipline and, and yeah. kind of, you know, growing that aspect of not even just your career, but just your life. Like, kind of yeah. talk to me a little bit about the journey in terms of what have been some of the biggest keys in terms of really honing in your mindset and, and staying disciplined all these years later. So, I got to a point in my life where I'd lost two fights in a row. So I decided to get a match because it was like, I got to the title, like heavyweight, I didn't win it. Then I got knocked out, and I was like, damn. Do I have it still? I've just got my title fight to get in knocked out. And then I fought Mordowski, and I lost. Mm. I, I've lost three in a row, is this, is this me done? And I was contemplating whether to retire. And I spoke to my coaches, spoke to my mindset coach, so I worked with him. And um, he said, well, again, at the end of the day, it's next. We win, we lose, but it's what you do next. And I really honed into that. And then I went on a couple of and I started winning. I think I actually went one five, five in a row. But it really is what you do next. And I really of finding um, mindset money because it, it changed the way I think uh, and how I just take life you know um, 
I think we grow, and um, if you don't learn from your mistakes, then you never, you never going to go anywhere. We all win when we all lose. It, it really is what you do next with it. And um, for, after I did lose that third fight in a row, I was just like, right, my next, my next opponent is uh, Karatonov, hmm. Sergey Karatonov. So it was a obviously for me, if I lost, I was gone. Bellator were gonna gonna cut me. That's the only fight they had for me. And he was on a five fight win streak himself. And he was scheduled to fight Ryan Bader. So it was sort of like I was the his last warm up fight. <laughs> you know, for him to go six to no and then go to fight Ryan. And I was like, it really is what you do next. So I went in there, again I had nothing to lose. You know, if I lose, I'm cut. If I win, then, you know, I'm, I'm keeping my spot. And then I ended up beating him. So it really was the best thing I did was to get my set. And um, my life had changed pretty much. Now I'm in the semifinals. Look at the journey, man. And uh, once again, I really do appreciate the time, man. I have a feeling we'll definitely chat again soon. Thank you so much. We, and uh, We will, man. We'll definitely talk soon. Thank you so much for the time.